Hi, welcome to Actual Lol. Last weekend, I was in Essen, Germany for Spiel 18, the biggest board game convention in Europe, maybe even the world. And there were over a thousand board games released. You might have seen my last two videos where I talk about some of the games I was most excited about. Well, now I'm back. I've got a whole bunch of games that I'm really excited to play. And I wanted to talk through my haul, tell you a bit about each game and why I picked it up. Before I start, I do just want to say that this isn't a normal amount of games for somebody to get from a convention. So please don't be watching this and think that I'm endorsing buying this many games. I have got a lot of these games because I'm a reviewer and I've got them so that hopefully I can try them and tell you which ones you should get because you shouldn't get all of them. Uh, so disclaimer aside, let's get on with the game. Starting with the ones that I picked up, uh, I took home in my suitcase. So as you can see, uh, I shipped two boxes home with the postal service that's in Essen and it's really good uh, and it arrived within a few days. Uh, but yeah, the ones I took in my suitcase, starting with Detective Club. This is from iGames in Ukraine and this is from one of the designers of Mysterium, which is a game that I love and it is similar to that in that it has the art cards that you have in Dixit or Mysterium where you're trying to communicate uh, through weird surreal art. In this one, it's like a cross between Mysterium and Spyfall or Fake Artist because everyone in the group knows the word that you're all trying to communicate with your cards except for one player. And they're trying to look at the cards that everyone else plays and fit in. The interesting difference to Fake Artist and Spyfall is rather than trying to work out what everyone is, else is doing and then guess and stay hidden, at the end, you actually reveal the word and then you all take it in turns to explain why you played those cards, why they fit the word. And it's just great because if you've got a hand of rubbish cards, you're really having to try and explain yourself, even if you know the word. And maybe the other per the person that doesn't know it is just having to explain themselves on the spot. We had a lot of laughter with this one. I played it last night, hence why I know a bit about it more than maybe some of these. So if you like those types of games, I can already recommend uh, checking out Detective Club. I had loads of fun with it last night. This is Troll Fjord. This is one of my most anticipated games from Zoc and uh, also from the designers of Avenue, which is a game that I love. This is a game with a bit of a gimmick. Uh, it has an area control thing where you're putting trolls out onto the board. You're trying to get the most points. The way you're getting points is by hammering a wooden tower to knock cubes out of it. So this is a tower, it would have a bunch of cubes in it, and then you are literally hitting it with a hammer as many times as you have trolls in the surrounding area, hoping to get cubes to fall out, but not too many because if you have the too many of the same color, then you go bust. So there's like a push your luck thing to it. And uh, there's a surprising amount of skill to hitting that tower. Um, so yeah, a a family game with an uh, interesting sort of dexterity, dexterity element that is actually kind of crucial to the game. Alone, this is from Horrible Games. Uh, this one is a reverse dungeon crawl. It's a big heavy box uh, thematic game where one person is alone in sort of tunnels that you would imagine in a dungeon crawl. The other three players are playing as the bad guys and they are working together. So in a dungeon crawl, you would usually cooperatively work as the good guys and then there's one bad guy. This is the opposite of that. Excited about this one because it's from Horrible Games. They just did Railroad Inc, which I love. Before that, there's Potion Explosion, which is great. Dungeon Fighter, which I like. They're kind of making great games and uh, this one's a nice twist on a genre, so excited to try that one. This one is a tiny Japanese game that I believe there was only 20 copies of in Essen and it is called I My Favorite Things, like E-Y-E, -E, and it's sort of a party game-ish card game where you are trying to work out how well you know your friends, but also playing a card game with that information. So for example, I might say to my neighbor, what are your favorite cuisines? Then they would write different cuisines on cards with hidden numbers in. So maybe at number one, they would write Italian because they love that the most, then Indian at number two, and then they'd also write one that they don't like at all. And then as they're playing the cards, you obviously can't see the numbers, but you can see the cuisines. And so you're trying to work out 
which you should play based on the knowledge of your friend. It also has a really cute uh, metal post box in it. I'm not entirely sure the reason for that, but it's really, really nice. And uh, I haven't played this one yet, but um, Efka and Elaine from No Pun Included were saying that they really liked it, so I'm excited to. This is Sunflower Valley. This is a roll and write game from Hobby World. Uh, it's got some really nice artwork. It has whiteboards rather than paper. And what I was interested to see was actually there's like multiple maps in this. So um, you have a bunch of different uh, kind of maps. So the game will be slightly different every time you play it. But you're rolling dice and then drafting those dice to place them into like a colored board so that when you, when you pick a dice, you can't just put it in any region on the board. You can only put it in the colored region that you have put on the board. So if somebody else has already taken blue because they put their dice on it, you can't, you can't draw in blue. Uh, it's also got kind of the cute drawing aspect that you have with like harvest dice. Um, and yeah, it was, I, I played this once. I enjoyed the, I love roll and write games. This one had plenty of thinkiness to it. Lots of different options of what you do with the dice and then the frustration of not having the colored regions you want. So um, looking forward to trying that one again. This one is Tokyo Ghoul Bloody Masquerade. This is one that I don't know too much about. I understand it's a social deduction game with a hidden traitor that's based on a anime. And the reason I have this is because the publisher came and brought it to me and uh, said he'd like me to try it. So uh, I'm gonna try it. So that, that's all I really know about that one. That's Tokyo Ghoul. Walls of York from Cranio Creations. This is, the simplest way to describe this is it's a roll and write game, but with a board and with actual components because you're all playing with identical boards that represent the town of York in the UK and you are building the walls of this city to protect from the Vikings. But you're also having to build a city that fits a certain number of icons in it. So you've got a grid that's basically like four of these and you're trying to get in as many coins for points, but you also have to get in a certain number of churches, a certain number of markets, a certain number of wells, whilst trying to keep out the Vikings. And the walls are these plastic gray walls that look a little bit like Ticket to Ride trains. Um, so yeah, it's, but it feels in the gameplay like a roll and write game, very sort of family friendly and with plenty of thinkiness. So let's get onto the boxes. Uh, I'm gonna start with this one. You'll be pleased to see that I have a knife rather than using scissors. I'm still, uh, still, people are still telling me uh, about when I used uh, scissors to open a box to this day. So, um, right, here we go. So starting with Men at Work, this is one I'm very excited to play. Uh, this is from Pretzel Games. It's a dexterity game where you are building communally a construction site with girders and these uh, workers that are really cute they have they're like meeples but they have plastic hard hats if you can see that um, and uh, there's also some other little objects like bricks that you are every turn flipping a card that's like an objective of what you have to do and then of course you're trying to balance it but if you make a mistake you lose a safety certificate that's going to hinder your progress if you're able to get highest on the structure you're gonna win awards for that, like employee of the month or whatever, and that's gonna help you win the game. Uh, I haven't played it yet, but Efka and Elaine, again, have played it. They tend to play more games at Essen than I do, and uh, they loved it, and they're not like the world's biggest dexterity fans, so that's really cool. Okay, Spell Smashers, this is from Renegade. This is a word game crossed with a dungeon crawl game, and I love word games. It's got some really nice artwork as well. And I love the idea of word games that are trying to do something different. And this one sounds interesting. I'm guessing that you're fighting off monsters with the words that you create. And that sounds great to me. So that is Spell Smashers. Affinity. This is a kind of like a party game where you're trying to understand emotions of another player. So another player has been assigned an emotion, maybe sad, creepy, beautiful, and they have a card, three cards that are gonna create a sentence. So I'm just gonna pick one at random, and it goes, a princess goes on an adventure in a graveyard. 
So they're trying to communicate an emotion with that and you're trying to guess the right thing. Of course, I just made it at random. So you're having to work out, vote communally, whether it's sad, beautiful, happy, uh, creepy. And uh, it's quite challenging. I played this very briefly at the demo thing with uh, Tiffany from the Wanta and uh, husband. And yeah, it was fun. So uh, I'm looking forward to trying that one properly. Trap Words, this was one of my most anticipated games. This is from CGE. It's a party game, which is a twist on Taboo, where you are trying to communicate things to your team, but there are certain words that you can't say to communicate that particular thing, and you don't know what they are, and the other team has picked them. So those are your trap words. We were gonna play this one last night, and then I realized that I'd left the cards out of the box because of my like packing routine, so we didn't. Uh, but yeah, very excited to try that one. Uh, okay, uh, Crime Hotel. Uh, this is from Happy Baobab, and this is a deduction game. And I'm always intrigued by deduction games. You're trying to solve a crime. Love the theme. Nice small box as well. It has trick taking in it as well. So I'm not sure how it works, but that is Crime Hotel. Rebel Knock. Speaking of trick taking games, uh, this is from uh, a Porter Games who did Avenue and also they're behind the Troll Fjord. This one is a trick taking game with hidden roles or hidden teams. This is a case of I didn't want to spoil it for me. I know that I like these designers and it sounds like an interesting premise. So I haven't <laughs> done too much more research. I'm just going to play it and, and hopefully be surprised. That's Rebel Knox. Tag City is a rare thing in these boxes because it's a game I actually played at Essen. Um, and this is from Runes Edition and from designer Robin David who did um, Movable Type that I talked about in a few videos ago in my board games I've been playing. This is a roll and write game with a graffiti theme. It's got whiteboards um, and the interesting twist with it is you're trying to fill up these different regions but every round someone is deciding which Tetris pieces, Tetris shapes, will be available for you to cross off on your board. And so if someone else is making that decision, then you will take the turns, and the person who assigned them will get last pick. So it's got a bit of a I split, you choose thing going on, um, so a bit more interaction than your average roll and write game. And when I played it, I, had, I uh, really enjoyed it, so I, I'm looking forward to trying it out in the wild. Uh, that is Tag City. Clank, The Mummy's Curse is an expansion to Clank. I've reviewed this, the full Clank game on my channel a, a while ago, really enjoyed it. So I'm just excited to get an expansion for it and have new content. Poetry Slam is an interesting one because I'd actually been interested in this game. I saw it when it was on Kickstarter. It's a party game where you, I, it says it's a cross between a word game and a party game. The reason that I have it is because I went to the gaming rules meetup. Uh, Paul Grogan, if you don't know, has a great YouTube channel where he teaches you board game rules, he does podcasts, and he hosted a meetup um, at Fritz Patrick, and I went along and he had this amazing raffle where he must have given away about 50 games. There was loads of different generous publishers that had contributed games, and Mayday Games, who uh, contributed this, was one of them. So I got a raffle ticket from Walking in the Door, and this is the game I won, and I'm really excited. And um, also, interestingly, this is designed by Adam Wise. I actually met Adam at the Roxley Games booth um, because he was, I, I believe he works for them, but he also had a prototype of an upcoming game of his, which is another party game called Guerrilla Marketing, where you're playing as gorillas trying to market things. And that one sounded really fun. Uh, and I, I wouldn't say I tried it, but he sort of explained it. So I'm very much looking forward to that. I had some really nice uh, artwork as well. So um, I'm hoping that I'm gonna fall in love with both of Adam's games, because I do love party games. The Table is Lava is a dexterity game, and also have here the um, expansion, which I believe just takes it to five players. And this is a very simple conceit, which is that you have cards on the table 
that are protecting you from the lava, which is the table around, and then you have meeples on that, and you are literally throwing cards or flicking them, as I understand, across the table if you want, um, to try and knock off the other player's meeples so that they fall into the lava, and to protect your meeples so that they don't fall into the lava. Love the small box on this, and I've heard good things as well, so I'm very excited to try that one. Fol Foston is uh, a speed grabby game that I uh, tried very briefly um, and what you do in this game is you roll dice and then you have to grab the right thing so much like Ghost Splits and other games like that. What's interesting about this one is you can really up the difficulty of it. it uh, it's not simple in itself um, but you can add extra dice kind of confuse you, um, almost like put in reverses of what you should do, add actions to what you should do, or noises that you have to make. So you can kind of choose the game you want to play. And what I also liked about it is that rather than just grabbing one thing, there's a, like a one, two, and three. So if you don't get the first one, then you want to get straight in for the second one or the third one. So you'll at least get some points. Um, and that was a nice twist. So that is uh, Fol Foston. Arboretum is one of the best card games ever made and it was originally from Z-Man Games. It's in my top 10 couples games uh, video and but it was impossible to get hold of and I don't know why that is. Thankfully now Renegade have brought it out and so I'm I mean the game is identical but it's got some nice new artwork and I'm very just super excited that you'll all be able to get hold of it because I remember when I first covered Arboretum there were just so, I used to get so many comments about people that just had no, couldn't get hold of it or it was like a hundred pounds on Amazon and things like that. So it's great. And if you've never played it, you should absolutely try Arboretum and check out my uh, video to learn how it works. Arg, uh, this is a tiny little travel version of Arg, which is a game that I uh, have covered on my Now Playing series, gave it a seal of actual love. It's a really cool bluffing game with uh, similarities to Cockroach Poker, but maybe a bit better than that. Um, and this is just a tiny little travel version. I mean, the original box is not that big, but I appreciate anything small. And it was only four euros and I can just take it on holiday all the time. So that's exciting. Deadwood 1876 is a social deduction game, team game um, from the company that brought us Tortuga 1664 and Salem 1673, something like that. And uh, those games are both games that I love. Uh, they're social deduction games that come in these wonderful wooden bo books that open up. Um, and so I had to try the third one in the series. And this one is obviously set in the Wild West. So that's a theme that I like. Penk is a little roll and write dice game from Crania Recreations uh, that they uh, offered to me when I picked up Walls of York. So uh, I love roll and write games. I hope it's one that I enjoy. All right, Dawn of the Peacemakers. This is probably the heaviest box uh, that I came home with. I, the, the designer was telling me that it's five kilograms. Uh, I think that, that sounds about right. Um, and this is a interesting theme of trying to stop a war or create peace. So you have a map where a war is going on, but you're trying to cooperatively influence that so that you uh, so that the war stops or you you are a peacemaker and uh, this has a campaign that will unlock lots of content as you go on it's got a whole bunch of miniatures and map tiles it's huge and um, judging by what Rado said in his video I'm definitely intrigued to by what it will reveal as the um, campaign goes on City of Gears is from Grey Fox Games this was on my anticipated list and what attracted to me about this was that it was a strategy game, but with some interaction, stuff where you can actually influence the other players, and with what seems to be some very unique mechanisms. So I'm intrigued by this one. This is One Week Ultimate Werewolf. This is a longer, more involved uh, version of One Night Ultimate Werewolf from the same company. And I'm excited about this one because I like those games, but I could certainly afford a game with a bit more depth, a bit more intrigue. It's got some really nice, these like little player pieces where you keep your, your tokens in. 
Um, and you're moving around different rooms of a castle and there's a day phase and a night phase and as you understand it, the roles are changing. So, um, because in my video before, I had a bit of a fear that you would kind of get stuck if someone finds out who you are because you give yourself away, then that's it for the whole 45 minute game. But no, actually things can, roles can switch and kind of allow you the ability to almost become hidden again. So that's really interesting. Um, anyway, looking forward to trying it. This is Rake Holt, and this is from designer Uwe Rosenberg and Renegade. And this isn't necessarily a typical game that I would like. I tend to, I like worker placement games and I, I like the theme of farming and stuff. I don't tend to like the heavier Uwe Rosenberg games. It's not even that I don't like them, I just wouldn't always veer towards them. As I understand it, this is like an entry level Uwe Rosenberg worker placement game. And so that's what appeals to me. Uh, it's got some really nice look to it and you're in Iceland trying to grow vegetables in a greenhouse, as I understand it. So I'm hoping that that one is kind of the right level for me. I certainly like his Tetris games. Camel Up. This one I'm very excited about. It's just an updated version and look of the old Camel Up game, which is a betting game where you're betting on a camel race, trying to work out who's going to win or what, what, uh, where they're going to place in the race. And this is just got improved components, nicer artwork. I'm amazed I haven't, uh, I didn't open that one because I'm very excited just to see it. Blue Lagoon, this was the top of my anticipated games list because I've already played it. It's from Reiner Knizia. It's very similar to his game Through the Desert. There's a bunch of different ways to get points. You're trying to connect up your people to different islands and collect different resources. And it's fairly abstract, but very simple in its gameplay, quite short, but loads to think about and very different in points depending on how good you are. Nice, uh, decent sized box as well. And that's from Blue Orange who tend to make things look nice. That's Blue Lagoon. Escape Tales, The Awakening is an escape room inspired game with a bit more theme and story than your average escape room because they tend to be quite just puzzly and, and abstract. And also it doesn't have it has like, I don't know if it's like a campaign, but it certainly lasts a long time. Like it's saying 360 minutes playtime, uh, but it also doesn't have sort of a time limit. So it's, I imagine a bit more of a chilled out, just solving the puzzles, but with some story to it, that sounds great. And the theme is that you're a dad whose daughter is in a coma and you're trying to get her out of that coma. Uh, and I guess we'll learn now how he does that uh, when you play the game. Bad Bones, this actually might be Dawn of Peacemakers for heaviest game. This is really heavy. Uh, this is a tower defense game from the people that did Magic Maze, the publisher. And it, what I'm attracted to about this is that it has that simple um, gameplay of Magic Maze. And then also just like that game, you can play an advanced version. You can kind of step it up. There's also ways to play it cooperative and competitive. And it's got these nice, I don't know if I can see them, it's got like a whole bunch of these plastic tower tokens. Oh, and hiding in here, I would have forgotten about this, is the Magic Maze Hidden Rolls expansion. So this is the beta version. Um, they're still maybe gonna make tiny changes for when it's released properly and with an actual box, uh, but they wanted to get it out of Essen. And this is basically Magic Maze, but with the potential for you to have certain hidden objectives, maybe be a traitor. That sounds great, so I'm super excited uh, to try that. Um, but yeah, Bad Bones also is definitely high up on uh, things now that I've kind of had a bit of a look at it. Uh, so I'll be playing that one soon. Werewords Deluxe. Werewords was in my top 10 party games of last year. It's a great game which is 20 questions with some hidden roles. So one player knows the word that everyone else is trying to guess. Everyone else is asking them yes or no questions. Another player knows it and is trying to throw everyone off with the questions that they ask. And another player knows it and is trying to throw everyone towards it, but without giving themselves away because then the werewolf will eat them. Deluxe uh, adds in new roles. It has nicer artwork because that was maybe the one failing of the other game is that it was pretty ugly. So yeah, I'm definitely up for that. Quantum is a pretty small box, 
But the thing that's very exciting about this, this is from um, Nuremberg Spieler Verlag, uh, which NSV, which did Quinto. And that is my all time favorite travel game and roll and write game. This is a roll and write game called Quantum, uh, also spelt with a W. And uh, it's from a different designers, I believe. It's actually from three designers, but two of these designed Showtime, which is a game that I was very uh, excited about at Essen. Uh, so I think they got decent credentials. And yeah, if it's in the same line, I'm hoping it's worthy successor to Quinto. Q-Birds is a simple card game with really nice artwork. I really like the artwork in this. It's all like 3D boxy birds. Um, yeah, and uh, I love the small box on it. And the gameplay seems almost like a filler card game. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to try that. Match Me is a party game from Emperor S4 and in this game you are trying to communicate something through colors. You have a question and then you're trying to answer with colors and match with the other players so it's kind of a cooperative thing and it makes me think a little bit of the mind where you're trying to all think with a common mind. I always love to find the little gems at Essen and something like that I feel like could be one that nobody was really talking about uh, but I, I, I saw something in it I'm really um, excited. I think Detective Club, there's definitely a, uh, some hype around Detective Club but I'm really pleased that I found that one because uh, it really paid off. Cupcake Empire, this is the game with uh, the best box art that I uh, have ever seen personally and it has some really nice components in as well. The dice in this, just the colours of them, but then they also have this sort of matte finish to them um, that make them look a bit like a sweet, uh, which is just amazing. And then these, these tiny wooden cupcakes, which I'm not going to be able to show you uh, <laughs> efficiently, so I'll just show you another time. This is a Euro-style strategy game with some dice where you are trying to uh, cook, bake cupcakes and sell them, and there's different... Uh, meeples that represent the customers and what things that they want to buy and so you then have to sort of fulfill those orders. Uh, it's such a cool theme and in, um, nice artwork and the gameplay sounds interesting. I just uh, I hope it's for me. The Boldest is from Spielwiese and Pegasus Spieler and this is from Sophia Wagner who uh, did Noria last year and this one is very different to that as far as I can tell. You are sending adventurers into the forest. So it has some programming where you're planning which cards to play. And in that respect, also kind of a blind bidding thing because I believe it's sort of how many adventures you send in and trying to work out what, what other people are going to be sending in. Um, so that is that one. Coming to the end of this box. Gun Kimono, this is a re-theme of a game called Heartland, which Tom Vassell used to really love. And this is quite abstract, I believe. The theme doesn't really excite me that much, but what does excite me is that it's a tile placement game, I believe with quite a lot of interaction. And it's from Jeffrey Allers, who did uh, Order of the Gilded Compass, which I like, and New York Slice, which I really like. Um, and so that is what's appealing to me there. And finally in this box, another similar thing where not too fussed about the theme of Santa Maria. I've heard great things about the gameplay and I'm interested because of the designers, because they designed Avenue and also Trollfjord. Uh, and yeah, uh, lots of people like that game. So that is uh, the end of that box. So we are on to this one which is slightly smaller. But this is where I've got maybe a few more small box games in. Okay, Say What? This is from Draw Lab. This is a reprint uh, with a different name of a game called What's It To You, which I picked up at last year's lesson. That was from a Korean company this is from Draw Lab, and I'm hoping that they've just improved their language in this game. It's a simple party game 
where you have a bunch of things, say for example, justice, art, chocolate, coffee, sleep, and you have to guess one of your friends is deciding, is ranking those in order. Which do they like the most or which they care about the most, chocolate or justice or art? And then you are trying to choose that rank. And I, it, there's a lot of games about trying to work out, understand your friends. And this one is very simple, but it just works and it creates discussion and it's a great conversation starter. And I love the small box. That is Say What. Dragons is from Matago and Bruno Fiduti. This is a game where you are trying to collect sets of stuff. You're a dragon, you're trying to collect loads of things for points, lots of like gold and artifacts. But you also need to make sure you eat enough of cows and sheep. Um, and basically, you're, every turn you're flipping a card and putting it on a stack. There's a stack for each player. And at some point, you'll take one of those stacks and then you'll be out and everyone else will kind of maybe stay in. And so you're trying to build up those stacks with things that you want, but also time it right with taking them. You play a few rounds, you're trying to collect stuff that you would want. Um, it plays really nicely. It's uh, a simple, I guess a filler game, but I love that concept of if you haven't eaten enough food, then you're just immediately out. Just like high society, uh, if you don't have enough money in that game. That is really cool, that balance of just immediately losing the game. Ice Cool is a dexterity game that has won many awards and you've probably heard of it where you have in the box there are lots of different classrooms this is a school uh, for penguins and you're flicking these penguins around the school you're trying to race around and collect as many fish as possible whilst one of the players is trying to chase you and catch you and uh, it's very simple and but what's really cool about it is that you can really get good at flicking those penguins. And I, I like dexterity games. A lot of flicking games tend to be a bit complicated, I found, like something like Flick'em Up just wasn't for me. That one uh, is the right kind of level. Peck Vogel is from Sock, and this is a push your luck dice rolling game where you're trying to collect points. Uh, I believe this means bad luck, something like that, and you can go bust. I tend to like games like that. Uh, so really it's just gonna come down to whether it's as good as some of those other ones. Uh, Bricks, this is from Schmidt and designer Wolfgang Warsh who designed the mine. So that's the main reason I'm excited about this one, but also it has a Tetris theme. It's a roll and write game as well. So you are, um, going to be filling up a board that looks a lot like a arcade machine and you have tetra shapes that you are i think can rotate you're trying to get them to hit certain spots to get uh energy which allows you to do future things um i love roll and write games well especially the good ones and i'm very i'm definitely going to be checking out every game that this guy designs for a while until he uh until he designs a dud. So um, that's why I'm in for bricks. Spy Club, this is from Renegade. This is a deduction game with a cool theme. I like the idea of being like kids that are solving mysteries. And this has a campaign to it that again, just from watching Rado's videos, he seemed to really imply that it get, makes it really interesting. Uh, it's also got some really nice artwork. I think it's the same artist as Dream Home, which is one that I really liked. Um, and it's cooperative, uh, so you're working together to solve something. Planet. This uh, has really nice box on this one. And this one is a quite a simple family tile game from Blue Orange. But the interesting twist of it is that you are literally building a planet. So it's this 12-sided uh, thing, and you are placing magnetic tiles onto it uh, and uh, so the rules itself for picking up the tiles are quite simple and you're trying to meet certain objectives and create biggest regions and things like that to get points. Uh, I haven't had a chance to play this one yet but it's definitely going to be one that I play early on because it's approachable and I think has had, I've certainly heard good things about it. Shummel Hummel uh, is from the same line of games as Cockroach Poker, Cheating Moth, Tarantula Tango. I love all of those games. Generally, there's maybe one or two duds. 
And this is seems to be very similar to Cheating Moth. And really, I just got it because I wanted to see the differences and I couldn't work them out. But it says on the back there's a reference to Cheating Moth. So it sort of implies that they are different in some way. And it's actually designed by the two kids of um, Inca and Marcus Brand, who've designed many games, including the Exit games. Right, we've got Deckscape Heist in Venice, and also somewhere else, there's another Deckscape. Uh, this is a escape room game in a tiny box. I love uh, Exit the game, I like Unlock, I love escape rooms. I've never had the chance to try Deckscape, and I just was listening to a Rado podcast who said that this was his favorite one ever, so <laughs> definitely excited by that. Illusion is also from Wolfgang Warsh, but this is uh, probably like his least famous game that he's had released so far. I think it's probably a party game where you have these cards, they have colors, different patterns, and you are having to guess which color is maybe like the most prevalent on the card and then it will tell you on the back. So it's kind of using optical illusions and uh, confusing you. Clank Expeditions Gold and Silk is kind of, I guess, a small pack of, uh, a small expansion for Clank, uh, and it adds an extra board, and I'm just liking more stuff for Clank, so that's really that one. This War of Mine, Tales from the Ruined City was one that I was really excited about. This is an expansion to this War of Mine, the game that I love from last year, I've actually grown in love for. It's a game where you're surviving the horrors of a war. It's And what I'm particularly excited about with this one is that it comes with another book with more story stuff in, and that's the best bit about this War of Mine. It's so well written and so interesting and heavy, but but fascinating and a great game. So I'm super excited about that. Muse Awakenings is actually one that I didn't know was gonna be there until I was there. Uh, Muse was maybe my third or second party game of last year, like really great game where you're trying to communicate through Dixit, Mysterium type cards, you're working on teams. So loads of cards like this, but the game is giving you a challenge such as uh, name a non-fictional band or musician. And so you're having to describe them in a way that the game tells you. This one, uh, it changes it very slightly in that it gives you points for the different challenges. So some are harder than others, but then you'll get more points for them. And it also just introduces loads more cards. So this is absolute kind of must have for me because I love Muse and this is just bringing me more of it. So of course. Abracazam is quite a uh, silly game, probably great for kids and families. It comes with a wand and you are uh, having to communicate. Um, there's a bunch of cards laid out on the table. They all represent different kind of shapes. And then you have to do the shape and the other player has to guess, uh, the other players have to guess which thing you're doing. But then it also gives you a challenge. So when you do future one things, uh, spells you will kind of so for example here you've been turned into a dog keep sticking your tongue out so very kind of silly party game thing this one I'm very excited about this is the expansion for Celestia it's called a little initiative and it introduces a little um, a separate ship that you can kind of jump out of and be in there on your own <laughs> And I apologize for the uh, action that I was just doing there. Um, and uh, it also brings in new special ability cards and stuff. Celestia is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, and from hearing about what's in that expansion, I'm very excited by it. Um, so then we've got Kitchen Rush. Uh, very similar in the sense that this is a game I love. I've done a full review of. This is an expansion. It's piece of cake and it introduces desserts and ice cream and also introduces a new type of worker which takes longer but has a more powerful action. Um, so yeah, very excited by more stuff for Kitchen Rush. Hollywood Golden Age. Um, I really like the look of this one. This is based on, well it's actually just a reprint of a older game from Rana Knizia called Dream Factory and there's been a whole bunch of names for it 
where you are trying to make films and hire actors and I think it's an auction game. I've always heard good things about it but never had the chance to play it and this is the Spanish version only but it's language independent so you just need to get the rules online and it should be fine. So I'm very excited. It's got like a really nice drawing on the back of Audrey Hepburn. So if all the art in the game is like that, then um, great. And it's from the same publisher as the Cupcake game, Ludanova. So, I mean, they've done a great job on two really good looking games. This is Crazy Eggs. This is a very silly uh, kids sort of family game that um, has been around a long time. It was originally called Dancing Eggs. It's from Roberto Fraga who made like Dr. Eureka and Gojo Gelato. And as you can see, comes in an egg box, which for some reason I can't open, even though I could before. Um, and there's a bunch of plastic eggs, and then there's also like a much heavier one. You roll a dice and it's telling you to do things like you have to hold the egg uh, in between like the crease of your elbow and things like that. Um, so it's kind of a dexterity thing. And I've never had a chance to try it, so I'm excited that it's like been come back out and uh, now I do. Gravity Superstar. This is from Sit Down Games who do Magic Maze and Bad Bones. And really I'm just excited to try this because their track record so far has been great. Uh, it's got kind of a video game type theme and there's some mechanism that is that means you're getting pulled in different directions by gravity. Uh, nice artwork as well, so that's that. Macbeth is a, I believe it's a push your luck game where it's a dice game at least, where you have uh, a bunch of actors or characters in Macbeth and they are in a pyramid and you are trying to get yours to the top um, and become, I suppose, the king meanwhile killing off other characters and it's secret which characters you uh, control. Uh, nice art, I, I was really attracted to the theme of this, just playing on Macbeth obviously, it's just something different. Incoherent is one of the few games that I played in the halls. Uh, I got to play this one uh, with uh, Ashley, board gamer girl on Instagram, which was like, it was really nice to meet her for the first time because she watches the channel. And uh, so we got to hang out a bunch and I played with Russ from Chits and Giggles and we were just kind of walking past this. I wanted to try it. It's from uh, Capstone Hong Kong who made Scribble Time, which was one of my favorite party games of last year. Very silly. This one is also very silly. Uh, where you are having to guess a word. So for example, I would have uh, a word such as, what, was, what were we playing with? Um, baseball. Um, but then the game would change that word for me. So I have to say apple instead. And then I have to tell stories that would get across baseball. So I would be saying like, oh, when I was a kid, I used to play apple. Um, down at the field with my dad. Um, I wasn't ever very good at Apple, but the other kids would always like, and so you're, you're trying to get other people to guess as quickly as possible um, what on earth you're saying. And it just creates such ridiculous uh, phrases and just loads of laughter. It's very silly, but you know that I like silly party games. So that's incoherent. Inside is another game that I got to try uh, in the halls. Uh, this is from Korean publisher Gemblo, and this the best way to describe this is it's like if you've ever played the game Two Truths and a Lie, because you've got some really nice art in this that is represented by some cards that are all over the place. Um, so, for example, here you've got a picture of like somebody walking a dog and things like that. And you'll be assigned a few of these cards and then you have to tell a story that relates to the three cards that are there when it's your turn. So you might tell a story about how you were scared of dogs as a kid or how you had a dog and it fell in a river but you found it two years later or something, I don't know, something like that. And uh, you're telling a story and then the other players have to decide whether you were lying or not, whether that story was true. And so what I like is that you are telling stories about yourself or kind of your experiences. Maybe you t talk about your parents or whatever. Uh, and then they're guessing whether it's true. So people are learning about each other. You're, get, you're starting conversations. You're also having to sort of play a bit on your knowledge of the friends. Um, I really like that. And 
you can decide whether to lie or not. You're trying to throw off the other players. So you can tell the truth, but you need to tell a truth that they think would be a lie. So that's cool. Ice Cool 2, this is the second version of Ice Cool. So they work together. You can expand it to create uh, an even bigger board. But what's also exciting is that it adds in extra ways to play the game or make it more interesting. So very excited for that. Architects of the West Kingdom is from Renegade. This is uh, from Shem Phillips, who designed Raiders of the North Sea and uh, Explorers of the North Sea and the other one in that series. And I've never played them. And this one is, I think, similar-ish to those. Um, and it's been getting a lot of buzz and I wanted to try it out. It has some interesting mechanisms where no, how many workers you have on a spot is how much you get paid from that spot. Uh, and then other people can kind of come in and clear you off because you're making too much from it. So there's a bit of interaction there. Uh, I love that it's a kind of smaller than average box and it's got some cool art from the Miko. Don't Get Got is from Big Potato Games. This is a really exciting, I don't even know how to describe it, I wouldn't even call it a party game, where you have, you're given objectives that you have to complete. So you're playing with a group of friends over a day or a week um, and you might play at work or maybe with your flatmates and you're trying to get them to do things secretly without them sort of spotting you or realizing what you're doing. So for example you might have to be challenged to say oh look at my shoe have I got like have I trodden something then if they look at your shoe you got them and then you win a point and you're trying to complete three of those goals. Of course, everyone's on the lookout. They don't know exactly what your goals are, but they are trying to be on guard so that they don't get got. Um, and that's what it's all about. So I'm really looking forward to this. So I'm gonna be playing this, I think, at LobsterCon, which is like our local convention. We go to Eastbourne and a bunch of my friends will be there. And I think it's just the perfect time to do it. Uh, they were also giving away uh, these packs to play at Essen. And I was just so busy I didn't get a chance, so I'm keeping this one to play in maybe in a smaller group separately. So yeah, that is just something cool and new. Deckscape uh, Mystery of Eldorado is just like the other Deckscape I said, uh, but with a different theme. And one of these, I don't think it was a Venice one, someone was telling me that they're best to play with a group because you each had roles and so it just made it, made it better to be playing with like a full six player uh, group rather than two player because I tend to play escape room games uh, just me and my girlfriend. Bell Ratty, this uh, this was actually out in the Galleria in a slightly weird booth and it had a sign up saying it had won like the Hippo Dice uh, Award. This was a simple card game, party game really, cooperative, where you are trying to communicate stuff. So you've got, um, you've got two cards out there that are just sort of symbols, so like a football and a pizza and then you're trying to play cards that match them if you're that player for the turn. Then the other players, then you get shuffled with a bunch of other cards, so then you've got all these different symbols and the other players are trying to work out which ones you intended to actually match with those cards. Uh, so it's similar to sort of uh, Mysterium, those types of things. Um, but yeah, it was just fun when I demoed it. Uh, Jungle Race, this is from Crania Creations. I believe it's a simple filler card game where you have these cars in a line and you're trying to use cards to manipulate the order of the race to win the race. Cerberus, this is a semi-cooperative game where you are running away from Cerberus who's trying to catch you and you are moving yourself but also moving other players. If somebody gets caught, they then become the bad guy and they, they are sort of now in a different faction and they can win as Cerberus. So you're trying to help each other but ultimately escape in one of the boats at the end. I like that idea of working together a bit, maybe backstabbing someone. It seemed like quite a simple game, like streamlines, just some card play and stuff. And I like the idea of there being multiple winners, but you don't actually know which boat is gonna be available when you get to the end. So it could have one spot, two spots or three spots. Uh, so it just sounds like it would make for some fun stories. Farben is from Spielvisa. This is a storytelling game where you are telling stories that relate to colors. So you've got a hand of color cards and you are having to associate a color with a word, tell a story, and then afterwards you are trying to remember the 
stories that people told or the colors that people played based on what you remember of the stories. Uh, so it's kind of a storytelling mixed with memory game. Um, yeah. And then blank, blank demic. This is a tiny little pack. This is an expansion designed by Colleen and Matt Leacock. So that's Matt Leacock, Pandemic Designer, and his daughter, Colleen. And this is for Blank, which is a game from Hub Games that was out at Last Essen, which is a really cool game where you create your own game. You create your own rules. It starts off as a very simple deck of cards with numbers and colors, where you're sort of playing a little bit like Uno or something like that. Um, but then every time somebody wins the game, they can write on one of the cards and change the rules of the game. And you can change it in so many different ways. And I really, I think that's just such a cool idea. And if you were the kind of group that didn't have loads of money or you're young and you only had a few games, I think Blank would be such a great game to have because you could just really invest in it and play and play and play and, and uh, evolve it. And this is where they've got like an amazing designer to kind of create an expansion for it that probably sparks ideas as you play with these cards. It will help you evolve your own deck, but also just kind of throws you straight in so that maybe when you're playing blank, it isn't simple from the start. It's already got some cool stuff in. And I, I imagine that some of these cards are inspired by Pandemic. Right, that is the end of that box. Uh, so finally, uh, I just had a few promos. In fact, not so many this year. Um, but first I wanted to, I got this little pin from Maple Games. Uh, and the reason I wanted to mention that was just because I got to meet with Daryl Andrews and uh, Peter Woken, who are the people behind Maple Games. And they showed me a game that they've got coming out on Kickstarter called Imagineers. Had some really nice artwork on it. It's kind of a family weight game with a Mancala system where you are building a theme park. You're, you're trying to impress uh, people that visitors to a theme park and get points that way. And it just, it seemed to work very well with the mechanism. It seemed quite a simple game, um, but uh, these people are walking around the theme park and you are trying to uh, give them a good time and you're scoring points like that. It's on Kickstarter, I think, uh, quite soon, like in the next two weeks or so. Uh, I also picked up some, uh, pro a promo for Colt Express, in fact, two. This was some kind of station thing that I've already put together. If anybody knows if there's any practical benefit to this, please tell me, because it kind of, it has the space for something here, but I didn't actually do my research to find if that actually does anything or if it's literally just uh, like uh, set dressing. And then this was a bunch of tokens that represent like um, the loot things and diamonds and stuff, but they actually have like way worse monetary values on the side, on the other side. So that I suppose they're just like, you open a bag, you get nothing. So um, you can just add that to mix up the game. And then my friend bought uh, Railroad Inc and got a Dungeon Fighter uh, promo card character. And I just love Dungeon Fighter. So they gave me that. Those are the games that I picked up at Essen 2018. Thank you to everyone that came and said hi to me when I was at the Fog of Love booth or out in the halls. I tried to get selfies with as many people as possible. It was so nice to chat to everyone uh talk about the games that they tried i'm sorry that i wasn't able to really offer much insight because i hadn't actually played that many games when i was at the fair but it's always just really nice to actually meet the people behind the comments the people that actually watch my videos and that i'm not just making it all up and youtube's inflating my view counts or whatever and i really look forward to seeing some of you next year at essen or maybe at the uk games expo or maybe at some other convention if i'm able to make it it's always the best bit for me going to Essen like I didn't I, I'm not there to play games I'm there to kind of meet other people that share this hobby with me and just enjoy that the camaraderie like it's such a buzz to just be in a place where everyone feels the same way about this thing that you love so thank you so much uh, to everyone that came and said hi that's about it for now but um Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because obviously I'm going to be talking about all of these games in the weeks and months to come and letting you know which ones I really love. I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching.